हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू बाजीरा वाई एस अकेडमी इंटरव्यू गाइडेंस प्रोग्राम सो इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन विच इज इन न्यूज एंड द करंट गवर्नमेंट हैज़ बिन प्लानिंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस साइमल्टेनियस इलेक्शंस फॉर बोथ लोकसभा और जनरल इलेक्शंस एंड इलेक्शंस टू स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबलीज सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज एग्जैक्टली वन नेशन वन इलेक्शन एंड वॉट आर द प्रोस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ कंडक्टिंग सच इलेक्शन एंड वॉट आर द चैलेंजेस मेनली कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल एंड लीगल चैलेंजेस बिफोर कंडक्टिंग साइमल्टेनियस इलेक्शंस एंड वॉट आर द मेन एडवांटेजेस ऑफ कंडक्टिंग सच एन इलेक्शन एंड वी विल ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड गोइंग अहेड वॉट शुड बी दी प्लान वेदर वी शुड अडॉप्ट साइमल्टेनियस इलेक्शंस और वेदर वी शुड रिफ्राइन फ्रॉम कंडक्टिंग साइमल्टेनियस इलेक्शंस कीपिंग इन माइंड वेरियस कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल एंड लीगल चैलेंजेस सो फर्स्टली अंडरस्टैंड द आइडिया ऑफ साइमल्टेनियस इलेक्शंस they are very often referred to as one nation and one election now you very often hear in news about one nation and one election okay so since it has a lot of benefits the government the current government has been planning to organize or conduct one nation one elections across the country at a single time so therefore this one nation one election has gained a significant traction across india particularly in the political discourse now if you look at india's opposition parties they have been opposing conducting one nation one elections because they are of the view that this simultaneous elections will benefit the national party at the center now apart from that the one nation and one nation tax or one na oh, sorry one nation and one election proposes to synchronize elections for both lok sabha and state legislative assemblies so this effectively means that both lok sabha and state uh, general elections will be conducted simultaneously side by side so it apart from that it also aims to streamline the overall electoral process so therefore the overall objective is enhancing the overall effectiveness of india's democratic system conducting free and fair elections and also make sure that the voter confidence on the voting system and on the democracy is maintained okay so this is the brief introduction about the one nation and one nation one election so apart from that we need to understand how simultaneous elections enhance the effectiveness of democratic process and governance so what are the main advantages of conducting simultaneous elections in india now first understand it effectively reduces electoral expenditure now if you look at election cycle in india at uh, at different times across you know all uh, all the time in a year different states so we have around 28 states and for all those states at least once in a year there will be regular elections so because of elections there will be a code of conduct so therefore it reduces the overall election expenditure since elections takes place once in 5 years now frequent elections at different levels of government they actually have a lot of strain on the fiscal resources or the financial resources of the political parties individuals and even for conducting elections by the election commission of india it takes a lot of money so therefore it effectively reduces electoral expenditure so the first advantage of simultaneous elections is it reduces the electoral expenditure however here the simultaneous elections would lead to significant cost savings so this is very important benefit or advantage of the simultaneous elections so when we save those resources and these resources can be used for the development and other social welfare programs okay so there's a need for capital expenditure need for infrastructure development need for social welfare so when we save significant amount of money on these elections we can spend those resources is on various welfare programs and even for the infrastructure development so the next major advantage of conducting simultaneous elections it enhanced uh, it enhances the governance continuity now what does it mean when we say that it enhances government a uh, governance continuity so because of the code of conduct came into force the government welfare programs actually they are disrupted so therefore in this context elections at different levels because of the code of conduct at different times across a year and different levels actually disrupt governance 
and even the implementation of various social welfare programs so therefore apart from that the politicians and bureaucrat shift their focus to campaigning from developmental activities so therefore it actually impact overall governance in the country so by aligning elections this disruption this disruption can be minimized when we conduct simultaneous elections so this effectively means that we conduct elections once in 5 years so since we conduct elections at a specific period of time this will not result in politicians and bureaucrats uh, shifting their focus from implementation of welfare programs to the political campaigning so therefore it will not disrupt the governance as well so therefore it enables the elected representatives administrators bureaucrats to concentrate on policy implementation and various other developmental activities so therefore conducting simultaneous elections is also good for the governance now after that uh, we need to talk about the another major advantage that is improved policy cohesion as well so because of various political ideologies and even different parties uh, you know uh, priorities among different governments can hinder the effective implementation of the policies now elections are not conducted uh, you know uh, they are uh, conducted at a one go so they are not simultaneous elections so because of this reason there are multiple elections uh, in within these five years of span so different political parties with their ideologies resulting in hindering of efficient implementation of various welfare programs or policies okay so this somewhat has also led to increasing the freebie culture uh, and the manifestos which are announced by these political parties often having irrational and unreasonable promises to the public so therefore you know uh, over a period of time what happens the voters uh, or the citizens of this country will lose faith in the electoral system and the democracy will lose its credibility especially a largest democracy in india so therefore in this context simultaneous elections will help in uh, you know developing a harmonized approach to governance with policies that complement each other so this is also one such advantage because uh, that is like a festival uh, once in 5 years so all the political parties with their ideologies so they can uh, they can campaign with their prom uh, promises okay so overall uh, overall it ensures improved policy cohesion okay so after that it also reduces the political polarization as well political polarization means vote bank politics marginalization of people on the basis of caste religion race caste sex okay so frequent elections very often exacerbate the political polarization and even the identity based politics so that also leads to the hate speeches by the politicians and you know further fragmenting the voters on these lines narrow lines so therefore uh, you know conducting simultaneous elections will encourage the political parties to focus on broader aspects broader national and state level issues so they they don't focus on these narrow divisive local concerns and therefore when they focus on broader national issues this will promote a more inclusive and unifying political discourse and that is for the larger good of the nation however we need to understand certain challenges with the simultaneous elections so what are those uh, challenges with the simultaneous elections now first we need to talk about the constitutional and legal challenges for these simultaneous elections now if you understand india's political structure it is a federal structure a federal structure means a federal government at the center and different units so each having their own government so therefore india's federal structure uh, is also having different governments at different levels so this federal structure actually mandates a staggered elections for states and any attempt to synchronize the general election at the center and the state assembly elections would actually require a constitutional amendment so this is not a simple legislative process but conducting simultaneous elections require a constitutional amendment so i i think you all know about the constitutional amendment indian constitution article 368 provides for the amendment of the constitution 
so there are three types of amendment uh, the first amendment with the simple majority very often that is not considered as a constitutional amendment and the other type of amendment is amendment with the special majority and when it comes to the federal uh, matters or federal subjects uh, an issue or top uh, 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 you know a particular matter has to be amended by special majority with the consent of half of the state legislatures so in the case of simultaneous elections as well so there is a need for a con comprehensive constitutional amendment now please understand the challenge with the simultaneous elections now we have around 28 states or okay so 28 or more states uh, because of the increased use of article 356 if there is a fall in government or if there is a fall in government with uh, due to lack of majority so that also results in lack of government for that particular state since uh, uh, conducting the general elections so this is very difficult to synchronize the elections of all the state governments or we need to reduce the use of article 356 the problem with india's democracy is we have a multi-party system and there's no clear majority for different political parties and uh, in the context of this house trading corruption among the political parties uh, and the candidates and even defections from the political parties despite having anti-defection law all these things make this uh, you know conducting simultaneous elections more and more complicated and difficult so therefore in this context there is a need for constitutional amendment especially uh, in article 82 85 172 and 174 of the indian constitution so when we talk about the major legislations that need uh, amendment include representation of people act 1951 and rules of procedure of Lok Sabha and state legislative assemblies should also be amended okay so these are the constitutional provisions that ha that are actually required now apart from that we need to talk about certain administrative challenges as well in the simultaneous or holding simultaneous elections now holding simultaneous elections on a massive scale actually demands enormous logistical and administrative efforts so we all know that what kind of an administrative arrangements need to be made when we are conducting simultaneous elections or even conducting elections for two three states okay so therefore we need to deploy the logistics required necessary logistics we need to deploy the evms and vvpat machines and the administration to all those uh, corners across the country so therefore it could be little challenging uh, deploying all these administrative and uh, logistical uh, aspects so therefore uh, in order to ensure adequate security deploying election personnel and managing resources such as electoral exercise is a formidable challenge and uh, you know uh, the election commission actually has the role of releasing the electoral rules or providing electoral rules to all the parties so therefore this is a massive exercise this is not a simple uh, exercise rather it is a massive and complex exercise uh, it requires the involvement of all the stakeholders and apart from that there is also a risk of dominant political party system came to power in both center and state levels because of the simultaneous elections so this synchronization of elections very often lead to the dominant party system so why dominant party system so there's a trend which has been going on whenever a simultaneous elections uh, takes place in any state or at the center uh, this is uh, very often happens that the voter will also vote for the party at the center so where the party which has been winning national elections sweep the state elections as well okay so this is a trend which has been going on so this could limit the political diversity and it will also reduce the checks and balances necessary for a healthy democracy now in a healthy democracy we need to have multiple parties we need to have different candidates contesting in a level playing field we want that uh, election should be free and fair 
however when uh, the national party uh, getting more votes in the state assembly elections also this will reduce the checks and balances that would deviate the actual purpose of conducting simultaneous elections now after that we need to talk about the dilution of local issues as well so whenever simultaneous elections are conducted national issues would get a lot of importance and lot of attention rather than the local issues so because of this reason it happens that the local issues would very often be sidelined and the national issues would very often get more and more prioritized now if you look at the lo local governance particularly the grassroots level governance in rural and urban areas so they actively engage with the citizens so if we do not take care of the issues at the local level then that would impact the governance uh, at the local level even the citizens uh you know trustworthiness credibility over the government and even the electoral system even over the governance everything will gets impacted so therefore uh, you know since local governments play a crucial role in addressing the grassroots issues grassroots challenges so about everything for example government policies welfare programs so their importance should not be undermined the uh, apart from the national issues the local issues should not be undermined so regional issues would also be important so therefore experts have been pointing out that dilution of local issues will have a lot of consequences uh, with respect to the local level governance uh, you know and even the regional issues of various state governments now in this context what should be the way forward in conducting simultaneous elections so how we can proceed so there are uh, certain things we need to keep in mind while conducting or thinking about simultaneous elections so you know what is the overall goal the overall goal or the overall objective is reducing cost conducting free and fair elections ensuring a level playing field enhancing the trust and confidence of the citizens over the voting system and delivery of welfare programs welfare benefits to every citizen or every eligible individual without any impact due to the election code of conduct so therefore in order to achieve the overall goal in order to conduct simultaneous elections there is a need for careful consideration and comprehensive reforms within the electoral system of india so this is what we need to do now careful consideration that involves uh, you know uh, taking opinions of all the stakeholders the political parties individuals and election commission so everything should be done apart from that before thinking about simultaneous elections there were pending electoral reforms especially about criminalization of politics intra party democracy and participation of women leaders in the electoral process everything have to be considered before conducting simultaneous elections because that is more important now apart from that the constitutional legal and administrative hurdles should be addressed and the concerns of regional parties local issues must be taken into consideration okay so different political parties views and opinions must be taken into consideration constitutional legal and administrative hurdles must be addressed so ultimately the success of simultaneous elections in india depends on balanced approach this balanced approach maintains integrity of federalism while streamlining the electoral process okay so this is the essence of conducting simultaneous elections so if executed thoughtfully this reform could contribute to significantly improving the efficiency effectiveness of india's democratic system okay so why because we have mentioned several advantages of conducting simultaneous elections cost saving and uh, you know deployment of administrative personnel and uh, implementation of welfare schemes welfare benefits for the different uh, uh, sections of the society or different segments of the society and uh, uh, we can uh, make sure that the politics uh, are not you know vote bank politics and they are not targeted at a particular section so therefore overall it ensures uh, or it improves efficiency and effectiveness of india's democratic system so this is the advantage of the 
simultaneous elections now when you are asked a question about the simultaneous elections you just have to mention all these points what are the challenges what are the way forward and uh, you know uh, what are the benefits with the simultaneous elections so you should also understand the concept of simultaneous elections so simultaneous elections is holding elections both general elections and state legislative assembly elections simultaneously or together okay so this is all about simultaneous elections so if you really like our work please subscribe to our youtube channel and also hit the like button so and apart from that if you have any doubts or any suggestions please write those uh, in the comment section thank you